what's up guys this is kidi cloudy and i know it's been a while it's been like almost 4 months since uh, i put out that video about my internship uh, and yeah i'm now done with the internship then i gave myself a few weeks off for no reason and a lot has happened in the past few months uh, i started a podcast uh, it's called clouds on air and i talk about movies pop culture and movies <laughs> I've already dropped like three episodes on there about Dune, Eternals, and uh, No Time to Die, and I'm really excited about it right now. And if you are by chance interested in uh, movies or pop culture, please check it out. I would it would mean the world to me. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'll be dropping a lot more cool stuff on there as well in the future, including a bunch of Spider-Man stuff. So yeah, stay tuned. Uh, but yeah, in the last few months, I also was working on a couple of coding projects. So every semester, I have to make like projects made out of code. That's that's like part of my curriculum. And every single semester, I try to sort of personally challenge myself into trying out new things, new technical things, so I can just expand my range of skill sets and all that stuff. Uh, and I've been really you know of course interested in video technologies audio video technologies and all that stuff and i want to learn more of that and experiment with them uh so i just asked my friends with whom i party with and code with uh would you guys be interested in this sort of thing and they were down and we almost built a streaming service almost video streaming as a concept is like everywhere now and we've been taking it for granted ever since its existence youtube and netflix are like the front runners in like making this concept pop- popular and it might just seem very simple you know a video is being played on a web page or an app like how difficult could it be uh, most people don't even think like netflix is a real tech company that's i'm i'm, I'm talking about public perception but this is what netflix back end looks like it's so complex even even i don't know how what half this stuff is i mean it's it's nothing like super revolutionary it's it's a solved problem it's not super cutting edge like uh, the blockchain or web3 or nfts uh, but i personally still find it interesting and something uh, to learn more about but yeah once you upload a video on youtube it uploads the video file first onto their servers and then comes the processing step now if you upload videos on youtube you might be familiar with the step or your favorite youtuber might have tweeted about it the processing step on youtube basically what it does is just encodes multiple resolutions of that particular video you uploaded and also chops them up into fragments and the way these videos are cut into fragments are basically specified by two protocols mpeg dash and apple hls and again i'm skipping on a lot of details over here because that's just going to make the video even longer but yeah just remember these two names especially mpeg dash and you also have apple hls because again apple has to create its own standard for everything and personally in this entire journey the processing part is i guess the most difficult because i mean there's so many checks and validations have to be made what type of file is it is it a prores file is it an h264 file is it 8 bit is it 10 bit uh, what type of bit rate to set it to um and like whether it's an hdr file and whether it's an hdr file then that's double the amount of processing because you have to do it once for hdr then sdr then converting everything to dash and doing all of that automatically and making sure it's scalable that is if multiple users upload at once you have to parallelly handle their requests it's difficult and i wouldn't blame youtube for being a little slow on processing while bringing pretty decent video quality at the end and this is this step is a little more like more convenient for a platform like netflix where their what type of content they ingest into their platform is more controlled they approve what type of video is shown on their website so they can manually optimize and tweak uh, all these ingestion settings and processing uh, when they onboard new content on their platform so i wanted to make something like that even at its most basic form its most rudimentary form um i just wanted to make like an encoding service 
running on the cloud and i kind of did so time for a little demo and to show you how this thing works and how it was made so this is it uh, this is the front web page it's like basically handbrake running on cloud and similar to how you would you know upload a file on youtube's upload page and it process and gives you a churned out processed compressed file uh, so uh, you can basically upload pretty much anything and um, i'll explain the mechanism in a little bit for now i'll just choose this video i already have it's like a 30 second clip hd uh, that's 1080p 5 megabits per second h.264 and it's about 80 megabytes it's an mkv file and i upload this and once it's uploaded, it's gonna give me a check mark. Um, and yeah, it's uploaded. And um, I'll set it right around at a thousand kilobits per second. And I'll just hit process on AWS. And it gives a progress bar. And I'll be honest, this progress bar actually doesn't do anything. I, <laughs> I, I just set it to around like five minutes and hope that the processing is done. So the way it works is that we just uploaded a file onto Amazon S3 and Amazon S3 is not nothing but Amazon's version of Google Drive to put it like in an oversimplified way. And uh, yeah, as you can see right now, this is the file we just uploaded. Um, the time is also pretty correct and it's in this bucket called Flux raw, which is where I store all the raw footage. Now, Every single time a new video is uploaded in this particular cluster, uh, what happens is that it populates something called this SQS queue. Uh, so as you can see, messages available one, which means it, it basically verifies that a video has been uploaded and one video is waiting at the queue. Now, every single time there is a new message over here, what's gonna happen, it's gonna trigger something called a CloudWatch alarm. And as you can see, just because uh, because we uploaded our file, uh, it's right now in alarm. And what it does is it spins up an Amazon EC2 instance, which has started running over here. And this EC2 instance is basically a virtual machine. It's basically a computer, which a virtual computer, a virtual machine, uh, which is running somewhere on Amazon servers. I have no idea where it is. I mean, they do give me the IP address and stuff, but yeah. And um, this is where the actual transcoding, that whole processing part is happening. And what's the actual specific code which does all this? Well, I can just uh, go into this and connect into this particular machine via SH. So we're in the machine right now, we're in the terminal of the Linux machine, which is doing all the transcoding and stuff. And we can just peek at the status. Uh, by the simple command system CTL status RC local and it's active it's running and uh, this is the exact so this is the sequence of uh, stuff which happened this is the particular fmpeg command which uh, started to execute and it's going well so far and it's still in process and it takes a few minutes because this particular machine isn't the most popular, most powerful uh, AWS EC2 config, which was available because these configurations get pretty expensive. So, you know, yeah. Why do you think I'm making this video? <laughs> uh, and we can, we can just uh, check it over and over again. And yeah, uh, now it's done. And uh, the web page, <laughs> So now if I go to my another Amazon S3 bucket where all the processed videos get stored, uh, yeah, here it is. This is output.mp4 and the size has reduced from 18 megabytes to 3.5 megabytes. That's pretty insane. Of course, the quality has taken a little bit of a hit because you know, you're basically reducing the bitrate by like a fifth. So it's gonna have some effect. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how this works. Or I forgot to mention this, but I actually got the inspiration for this particular 
thing uh, from a video by Codam. I made a collab, a collab video with him a few months back, like several months back. Um, but yeah, he has made like this very detailed video about, you know, uh, a scalable video processing architecture. And that's what he uses for his video platform. And the video is pretty interesting. You should check it out for like a more detailed version of like what exactly the services which are being used. I'll link that below. Uh, but yeah, this is by no means perfect. And uh, I don't think I talk enough about FFmpeg. Uh, FFmpeg is what's actually the tool which is handling all the transcoding. And FFmpeg is like so popular and it's like the go-to tool. Like pretty much any software which uh, does anything related to video, it's it's got to use FFmpeg. Uh, Handbrake, I think, uses it as well. And uh, yeah, so it's it's just the right FFmpeg commands and uh, uh, the proper encoding recipe, which will make something like this very, you know, useful and successful. And a company, so a platform like YouTube, obviously optimizes for, you know, latency. They want to reduce latency as much as possible. So they will uh, compromise on the bitrate and they'll compromise on the quality. But since we don't have to deal with any of that, we can optimize for quality more. And yeah, I could also even optimize this for, you know, uh, spit out dash fragments, those fragments which I was talking about, or even HLS fragments uh, for Apple devices. Uh, but yeah, speaking of fragments, um, the thing is that uh, making fragments, you know, creating a dash manifest is a little difficult because it's a little difficult on FFmpeg and there is another tool to use for that uh, and that's Bento 4. So uh, because there are two separate tools uh, to use, I, I, I did not incorporate that functionality of creating dash fragments into this AWS thing. I try to do, I try to run some local tests on my machine on this MacBook Pro uh, to create those dash fragments. And it was kind of successful. Um, I took the second No Time To Die trailer uh, and chopped it up into dash fragments just to see how that works out. And uh, yeah, this is this is just is basic like a basic front like front end HTML page to demonstrate that the one on the left is basically a simple HTML, uh, MP4 file uh, sitting on a video tag, and the one on the right is uh, the one which is chopped up into different fragments. And these fragments are also encrypted by a clear key DRM. So yeah, this this also has so I I kind of tried two things at once. That was pretty cool. And this also happened to be my uh, cybersecurity project, you know, implementing a DRM. Uh, so that's pretty cool as well. Uh, it's uh, encrypted using MPEG CENC. So it's a, you know, uh, MPEG CENC plus clear key is like a very open source alternative to uh, Widevine, which you might have heard about. So that's what I implemented over here. And to show you how this actually works, um, I'll just go to the network tab over here and I'll just hit play on my encrypted thing. So you can see it's not, you know, um, getting all the video at once, but it's getting segments, all these segments. These are video segments which are being, uh, you know, brought with every HTTP request, you know, and it's getting those buffers. And this is what basically buffering is. And uh, this is just a one single, I'm not using adaptive bitrate streaming or, uh, this is not alternating between different resolutions which I talked about. That's That stuff is even more complicated, so I just tried to keep it simple. But yeah, that's what basically is ha happening over here. There are different segments for audio and video and everything gets combined and yeah, it's, it's pretty magical uh, to be honest. And yeah, so I have a Dash player over here. This is basically using uh, the Dash.js video player for the web page. And I'm getting the feeling that I'm being overly complicated <laughs> with this particular video and uh, you probably are getting bored, but I mean, there is no easy way to say this, <laughs> these things. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's basically it. Effectively, I now have two things, a video processing encoding backend and this web page which can play back dash content. And I somehow need to kind of 
merge them together and effectively what i'd have is a streaming service a streaming so- service sounds too weird maybe like a video platform and uh, i have no idea what to do with that or like any sort of a business purpose of that video platform um i don't know maybe i can just host all my videos at like a lossless format lossless quality without with like minimal compression and i know there's like a lot of tweaking to be done in my fmpeg script and you know what maybe i should just ditch the script and make it like a proper functioning node js or like a python server which will have apis and it it will intelligently you know get videos in and put videos out and update the database of what videos have been processed in in its lifetime and create video urls and send them on on to the front end it's it's all of it is possible but again i have to make it i have to ask my friends to help in coding it so yeah it's going to take some time and maybe in a few months uh, i end up doing it and maybe there'll be a part 2 of this video so yeah nevertheless i i had a ton of fun you know making this stuff and uh, i thought it was interesting so it was definitely worth sharing and yeah that's basically it i'm going to go back to studying for online exams <laughs> so yeah, that's basically it thank you so much for watching i have a couple of more cool videos lined up after december so yeah i'll catch you guys in the next one also check out my podcast yeah that's all thank you so much for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one cheers